In today's episode, I speak to Kay Lundy about what to do if you are made redundant, especially if you are over 40. One of the top priorities you should be considering is the need to continue to develop yourself. Now is the time to reevaluate your life and to do the best thing for your emotional and mental health, especially for women who are taking longer to get back into jobs following redundancy. This discussion is about the future possibilities arising out of the 2020 pandemic. Listen up to the rest of the conversation. Before we begin our conversation, here is a quick shout out to the pathologically curious. Check out the Maverick Paradox magazine. It's a digital magazine written by Mavericks for business owners and professionals. You can find the magazine at themaverickparadox.com. The magazine's aim is to provoke Maverick leadership everywhere. Welcome to the Maverick Paradox podcast, where we explore what it is to be a maverick and discover effective modes of leadership. I am Judith Germain, and my mission is to propel the maverick mindset into a world where character and integrity will ultimately have a higher premium than personality and bureaucracy. So thank you for joining me on this journey. If you would like to continue with me, then please subscribe to my podcast on iTunes, Stitcher or one of the other popular podcast platforms. And today our guest is Kay Lundy. Hi Kay. Hello Judith. How are you? Yes, I'm very well and I hope you are too. Yeah, I'm great. It's a lovely, shiny, bright day today, so it's really yes. hard to be upset when the sun is <laughs> shining, I find. Thank you very much for inviting me on today. Oh, you're welcome. I'm interested in the subject, but before we kick off with what we're going to talk about, tell us a bit about you. Um, well, I've been um, in business assistant support for the past 35 years as an executive assistant, a personal assistant, um working for many different companies in very many different industry sectors and abroad as well and for the last 14 years I have been a life coach um which I've thoroughly enjoyed um and really um I was made redundant in March because of Covid and I saw that there was an opportunity to really help support um, the many number of um, business administrative professionals who were finding themselves made redundant. And I used my coaching um, skills to support them and to help them and give them sort of ideas and opportunities to go forward. Um, fortunately, I had been mentored um, last year by um, a, a business mentor. So I felt in a very, very good place to, 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 to do this. And in fact, it was a great success. Brilliant. Uh, well, I'm all up for business mentoring because that's one of the things that I do a lot of. So, <laughs> so I could definitely um, say how good that is. Um, Thank you for that. What I was thinking would be an interesting conversation today is to look at what happens if you're over 50 and made redundant. I did notice that it seems to be almost as if 40 is the new 60 in the sense that a lot of companies think that you're over the hill when you're 40. and uh, Even 40 year olds are, are struggling to get new roles so certainly in the 50s I can certainly understand it so if you're 50 and you've been made redundant what do you think you should do well it's true um the baby boomers and generation x who are now um 40 they are 40 now generation x um they are the ones one of the biggest groups to have been made redundant in this latest pandemic and there is there is a lot of support out there um, for them Um, but however I believe at this age and because baby boomers and generation x are naturally committed self-sufficient competitive they're resourceful they're logical and they're good problem solvers 
that they have the opportunity now to look at all their options. They have an, a, a huge amount of skills, experience, expertise and knowledge in the, the work they've been doing for the past 20, 30, even 40 years. And they can utilise these skills in new new career options, um, even a you know a second income stream. They can they have so many transferable skills that they can utilise and actually capitalise on to to look at other options. It it become you can become sort of quite blinkered in thinking you know if you've done this kind of job for x amount of years that's only the job that you can do but this isn't the case um we've by the time you've got to that age you have faced a lot of challenges you've had to adapt a lot um you know you might have come up against looking after children on your own divorce looking after aging parents and actually you're more adaptable than you than you believe you are and I would say when you get if you've made redundant at this age then we need you know you need to sit down and look at other options your what what you enjoy doing what you're good at uh, what you're passionate about you can you can look at that and add on to other other options out there um i do actually know someone who loves walking um finds it very very inspiring uh good for your health your mental well-being and she's also a coach and she's actually amalgamated the two and you use that to um help other women and it's called you know um a walking it's a walking group um, but she's found tremendous um, success in doing that. So that's just an example of what you could do. You know what, that's really interesting because it makes a lot of sense, especially part, like the colleague you've talking about there about combining the, the walk and with the coaching because a lot of people yes. find it easier not to look at their coach when they're talking. So the fact that you're walking side by side might enable someone to unburden themselves more because they're not worrying about the reaction of the coach. That, that's correct. And, um, I mean, she even does these, you know, pre-COVID, the, um, you know, very long walks over, a, you know, a number of days where you have to stop off and, you know, stay in a hostel, for example. So you're having, you know, a really valuable um, but relaxed coaching session, a retreat or, almost. Um, and it's not only good, as I said, physically, it's good mentally as well. Um, so, yes, it, you know, if you have a passion or a hobby that you've taken up, um, you can sometimes look at that and, and try and align it with um, soft skills that you have. And I, I, I often say, you know, do th make three columns, you know, firstly, a column of um, things that you're you enjoy doing every day. It could be it could be walking, it could be dancing, playing an instrument. Um, and then you could also do another column next to that, um, how you can, um, you know, where you could teach it or you could make a website or you could do a training manual. And then in the last column, you could try and find, say, 10 different um, businesses that you could make out of your, your passion and your skills. Um, and that's a very good exercise to do. It can take quite a time because you've got to think outside the box. You know, you've got to think creatively. And I think, you know, that's another good point is that, you have to think differently and not just go down the normal course um, because there's thousands, tens of thousands of people all going for the same job at the moment. So um, that's, you know, that's another suggestion. Yeah, I think you're you're definitely right with that. There are hundreds, thousands sometimes going for the same job. And I know that when I work with people in that kind of transition point, I look at the impact that they might make. So we look so another way of 
if you say thinking more creatively rather than saying what skills do I have on a functional basis, looking at like, what they have in things like um, what impact they provide, what's the proposition for themselves. So it's almost like um, similar to what you might do with a business owner or an entrepreneur looking to go into another business because I think when you've been in the workplace for so long, say up until the age of 50 or even 40, you get so used to the corporate way of looking at things that you don't realise that you have all these other skills that are bundled up. Like you're saying, like a parent um, looking after the children is a great multitasker, great person at making the budget <laughs> and all these kind of, you know, and all these kind of, like how on earth do you get, or even like a, a working parent, you know, you have the COVID and the, and you say so you've got working from home, helping your kids with their online schoolwork, <laughs> meeting your deadlines, <laughs> doing all this sort of stuff. It's a, it's a lot of skills. And I think sometimes that people don't realise that they have that. And sometimes working with somebody helps, working with a mentor or a coach yes. that can yes. help draw those stuff out, especially if someone's worked in that industry as yes. well. So yeah. they can say, this is what, this is what I did. So mm. what other options are there? So in terms of, if you've been made redundant and some of those older people will be very fortunate in having a really good redundancy, like a final pay redundancy, um, so they may have some money behind them. What do you think they should do? Do you think they should set up a business or more concentrate going back into the work market? Um, well, a lot. I think a lot of that, that depends on your character. Um, it will depend on your motivation, your focus what you need to earn i mean that's going to be a big driver um if you've got a good redundancy package and you've got a few months i mean let's face it some people at 50 might not have a mortgage anymore um i'm not saying everybody um they might not have so many financial restrictions they won't have necessarily um dependents at home or children at university so if you get a good redundancy package and you've say got three months even at your disposal, then I would definitely say, go and learn a new course, learn something that you've always wanted, you know, haven't had the time before to do. Um, because learning is such a good developer, you know, we should never ever stop developing ourselves, learning new things, um, increasing our knowledge because you could find a course to do with something that really interests you and then you might find that leads you down another path to an alternative role. I mean, it could be something, for example, say you loved painting, you were very good at art, you know, you're a good artist, you loved that. You could, you could maybe do some kind of teaching qualification or go and help volunteer somewhere with um painting you know for thera thera therapeutic reasons there's lots of um places like that where they just do art clubs you could join that and once you know once you've started opening other doors you will see different pathways in front of you um which you may not have had the time or the energy um, or the patience to have to have even looked at whilst you were working full time and commuting. I mean, I think that's what a what happened a great deal in the 40, 50 um, bracket was during this when we were in lockdown, that people did start looking at um, other opportunities and and really developing on their their skills there was um so many free courses at your disposal and i know for a fact um i mean there was one lady i spoke to who loves gardening absolutely loves it and um she she did some courses online um that was very relatively cheap um and she's now you know, she was a PA and now she's she's working in a garden nursery and absolutely doing something that she, she loves and she doesn't want to go back to being a PA. And if it wasn't for that opportunity, 
um, you know, that would have that would have never happened. She would have continued in her work um, and just, you know, accepting. But now she's a lot happier. And I think a, a lot of it, you know, we do get um, in a repetitive rut. You know, it's the daily commute. It's the sit down at the desk. It's do your job, go home. Um, and we just accept it. But being given that time to actually reevaluate our lives um, look at our well-being, our lifestyle, our flexibility has opened up so much more, especially to the baby boom and boomers and the Generation X. And there are so well, you know, you you can you can read it, hear it. People don't want to go back to the office. They want that flexibility. They they want to be treated like adults and working in a in a different way um without having someone looking over their shoulder the whole time you know it, we're being trusted a trusted employee which i think has been lacking a great deal in the office environment yes i totally agree with that i deliver a lot of leadership programs that i bespoke to people and one of the things i've noticed over the years certainly over the last five or six years is that requirement to teach trust in the workplace. So to teach leaders on how to be trusted and how to engender trust in others um, Mm. to make that difference. So what I hear then is for those that have been made redundant who are finding it hard to get back into the workplace because they are deemed to be too old, is to consider the transferable skills that they have, even if that means things like, you know, um, the stuff they do at home, to consider consider the transferable skills, to look at alternatives to what they are currently doing. And that's like the example that you've given about the the PA that's moved into gardening. Um, Yes. And to look at how you do things as well. So... I'm assuming you mean things like if you worked, I don't know, five days a week trekking into London, you could work on a more flexible basis in the same organisation, or maybe you only work part-time in one organisation and do part-time something else, which may or may not be growing a fledgling business, even if it's not in that area. Um, Yes, that's correct. You know, I think... I do think a lot of companies are looking to scale down now anyway. I mean, that's been very obvious. Um, mm. I think if if companies, um, you know, are having to scale down and employees go on a part-time basis um, and those, those employees want a second income stream, then now is the great opportunity. Um, you know, obviously, if if you are... Uh, you know financially restrained you are going to have to just keep applying keep applying um it does appear that the job market has increased you know increased a bit with um new opportunities however um i i just heard today as well that apparently women in particular have been very very slow to at, you know they're not going back into the workforce after being made redundant there's many that have really struggled with working from home and looking after the house and mm. their dependents um and they're slower off the mark to get back into the workplace um so i do think there's going to be a shift from the expectation of full time commuting work to flexible part-time work with more people becoming self-employed even if it's a hobby business um but it will give them that little bit more financial flexibility um there may be some very fortunate people that can say okay i don't want to work in the paye sphere anymore and just have my hobby business or start another business just to give them some extra money and you know an expert-based business um 
I think we're going to see a huge rise in self-employment again. Um, I know for a fact from the administrative professional industry, they are now, there are so many now that are virtual assistants. Um, and I can see that companies using office EAs, PAs, are probably going to start outsourcing to VAs because there's so many. And they're not going to come back into the workplace. You know, now they've had this taste of working for themselves, um, building up their own client base, uh, learning new systems. And there are so many business support networks out there now um, who are, you know, they can they can sort of help themselves to, to courses and Zoom meetings and everything else. Um, you know, like IT, where that always used to be in-house, it's now heavily outsourced in companies. I believe that PAs or the admin work will be outsourced to VAs. Um, and I can see that self-employment really increasing. And, you know, let's face it, when you get to 40 or 50, you are far more confident, you have far more experience and skills to be able to, you know, that it's a great springboard really for you to utilise all of that to your own benefit, which I think is happening. Yes, I do. I think I think on some of that will depend on whether the office ever returns to what it was or whether mm. it will stay to be a kind of a hub where people come in for maybe training or, or once a week, once a month, get together and they stay at home. I think it will, you know, it will depend on whether the government incentivizes offices to reopen mm. Um, mm. or not. So if money, you know, if councils get paid out of, you know, rates, business rates, they're going to want them in the, you know, they're going to want them in, in the back of the office so that the mm. council, mm. otherwise the government will have to pay for that part that the council not getting back. So mm. it's quite complicated. And I suppose there's the other side is that it t can take many years of running your own business to get to the point of the money that you were earning before. Mm. Mm, mm. as well so, so there's that aspect isn't it between what you know I want to work for myself but I need to have x amount of money coming in to be able to pay the mortgage and everything else and how long can I sustain growing the business until I get to yeah that yeah um you know I mean the the um the CEO of Barclays did say that the the days of filling buildings with thousands of people has come to an end and they will not be doing that so goodness knows what canary wolf is going to look like mm. in the future um yes i mean there there are um these sort of hubs already in london where you can um just book a desk you yeah. know or, or a firm can just book a, book a few desks and i think that's what's going to happen in the future i mean obviously it's going to be x amount of years down the line um but i'm i'm also reading already that people are moving out of city hubs and moving into the countryside or the coast because they don't have to keep coming into london they can come in once a month now or you know once every two weeks and mm. the you know the cost of living outside of London will balance out any sort of once a month once every two week train fare so I can see a huge shift in not just how people work um, but in our cityscapes as well um, I think London is going to take a long time to get over this and, and other big cities like Manchester, Birmingham, um, you know, etc. There's, there's, I think there's going to be an awful lot of change and really we have, individually, we have to start embracing it now and seeing how it's going to sort of benefit us 
personally. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's <laughs> who knows. I mean, I haven't got a I haven't got a, a a fortune, you know, ball. I've forgotten the name of the magic crystal ball. ball. Crystal, crystal ball. ball. That's it. Yes, <laughs> I haven't got a crystal ball. Um, who knows? But you know, we've been through when we had the financial crisis in two thousand and eight, and I was made redundant then. Um, it was very slow to recover as well, um, but we did. And, you know, think things move on. And it's just a natural course of events that we're going to get these highs and lows. But it's just how we deal with the lows and how we pull ourselves out of them. Mm. And it, it's all about mindset as well. You know, it's um, you've got to have the right mindset. There are a lot of people I know who this is this whole situation has been quite damaging to their their mental stability um which is is very very sad um but hopefully with things slightly improving now um you know i i hope that things will change for them it's i think a lot of it is to do with loneliness so i i know of other pas who live alone they don't have families they are of the 40s well the 50 range um and really the office hub was you know their sort of semi-social um you know place they they saw their colleagues every day they interacted and then all of a sudden they found themselves working at home in complete isolation with no you know focus or anything and um it affected them quite badly so again you know if you're you know we've got to look at if people are going to work from home in the future it they might actually find it quite isolating it's not for everybody um i mean i've noticed a big difference myself but luckily i'm i'm not that kind of person where it it bothers me but there's a lot of people that it does and that that's again that's another thing we have to take into consideration if if you're prepared to work in isolation and be responsible for every decision that you make about your new business um speaking to i've i have spoken to someone who's been a va for about 15 years and she said that was one of the biggest things to deal with when she became a VA was that she suddenly found herself, you know, she doesn't have the IT support on hand. You know, she was having to make every single decision herself. You haven't got anybody to sit around a meeting room with and discuss it. So, you know, that's another a negative side of um starting up your own business so these business support networks are very very important to bounce off ideas ask questions and in fact i i belong to one it's called the expert membership and it's absolutely invaluable for asking information because we don't know everything you know and there's always so many new things to learn um and it, it's it's good to get bounce off ideas get advice um and just discuss things so mm. yeah it's a I think it's a huge subject um, yeah it, it certainly is and, and I suppose in some respects it's it's handy for people like you who's a coach people like me he does mentoring because we've been there and we know mm. what's required um to to make things move forward so just thinking about what you've been saying or what we've been discussing, it strikes to me that if you are in that situation, almost at any age really, of, of suddenly discovering that you're, the safety that you always felt was there from working in an office, which you and I know is an illusion of safety. There was never any <laughs> real safety. There never was any security in the office. It felt that way. <laughs> Um, and that's one thing that um, this whole COVID situation has demonstrated, that there's no security in the office. And even if things went back to what would people say is normal, this kind of pandemic situation or something else like it will always occur. So you always need to have an eye on to what you could do 
when you got made redundant or when your office shut down or because this is the cycle that we're going into. And it makes mm. me think that there's probably two or three things you need to do is once, you know, everyone's allowed to panic for, mm. for you know, because everyone will go through that, oh, my gosh, I don't know what to do, what am I going to do, how am I going to cope? And that's perfectly natural. As long as you just don't live there. And once you've done that, I think it's about remembering who it is that you are as an individual. What is it that you have to give? Um, what is it that you need? So what are the alternative sources of income that you can have? Um, there's things like, you know, write that book. Um, do You know, write that book as your sideline and do something with it. Um, look at alternative ways of working. So, for example... You know, if you're in HR and what's looking for a HR job, think about coaching. Which you, you know, mm -hmm. or if you're, I don't know, I see a lot of people who are like teachers, for example, that can go on to tuition. I was talking to somebody a few months ago that was, they run a business and um, that in the hospitality industry, obviously that got hit really bad. They wasn't quite sure what to do. Um, and they were uh, they were born in another country, and I suggested tutoring. Have you thought about tutoring? And it's like, oh, I've never thought about tutoring. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, that is something that you can do today because you obviously exactly. can speak, and that person can speak a number of languages as well. They could speak, I think, it's five or six different languages really fluently. It's like, well, I think you should. Whilst you're waiting for people to come back into your hospitality arena, why don't you look at private tutoring? You know, they've got the, you've got the schools, you've got the adults learners, and you know, and that's what they're doing now. Um, whilst they're waiting for their other business to pick up, so there's those kind of things. Um, also, I think you've talked about the resilience. So I'm sort of thinking, what can you do to build resilience? You know, because your motivation gets knocked. And so, what do you do about building resilience? Look at your personal capability, because there's many things that we can do. And I think, and well, certainly what I help people with and organisations with, is that looking to be change ready, someone that someone who's able to flip into whatever area is required. And that's a change of mindset, isn't it? So yeah. you go yeah. into school, uh, you're no longer taught that you're going to have a job for life, but you taught in a very kind of narrow framework as to what is possible. And sometimes you see people and you think, Oh, those skills naturally turn to this area, but because people are so forced into thinking narrowly, they try to stay in that same industry. And you could just, you know, it's like I remember a few years ago when I used to work in office, I had um, had this uh, of running a HR department, and one of the girls said that she she was just doing generalist HR, and she really really wanted to be a teacher. And mm -hmm. I said to her at the time, do you really want to be a teacher? Because teachers don't get paid as much as you're getting paid now. <laughs> they would be very pragmatic. Because I really, really want to teach people. And I said, have you thought of doing training? Have you thought of mm -hmm. training people? Then you'll get the same salary, or if not more, as your skills increase. And it still fulfills the need. And that's what she ended up doing. So her need for teaching wasn't that she wanted to teach children. She just wanted to impart knowledge. Yeah. But she didn't yeah. think of... Even even though we're in a HR department, <laughs> to think of training because she had that fixation of I want to teach, so therefore I teach children. Yes, yeah, yeah. And you know, when we explored it, and she was quite young, she was like, I "Don't really like kids." Like, it's certainly not a good <laughs> idea to be able to teach it because I think she was something like twenty. So like, I'm not ready for kids. I'm not ready to handle kids. So like, yeah, how about training adults then, <laughs> <laughs> or teaching in the university? You know, doing that. So I think it's that kind of skill set. Is there anything else that you would like to add in terms of, you know, what do you do? You've been kicked out of your secure role. What next? Is there anything you want to add before we come to a close? Um, I would say I think a, a really good exercise is mm -hmm. to think about your personal brand. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's how you promote yourself. Um, it's your unique com comb combination of all your skills and experience and um, telling your story. 
and it, it's a very it's a very in thing now to have a personal brand. Um, I yeah, I mean, there's I would say have a focus um, and and think hard about the image that you want to create. Um, be genuine and authentic to anyone you speak to. Um, be you know tell your story be true um because i've you know it it comes it becomes an unnatural thing to do you don't have to pretend to be anybody else um i'd say be consistent in in what you want want to achieve and go for it be focused um you still need to have that essence of creativity like you said you know mm-hmm. teaching but also thinking outside the box well if I can't teach children who else can I teach there are loads of different um opportunities and and you know different ways you can look at it um I would also say a big one accept that you're going to have failures because you know we're not robots we are continually learning and we will have we will fail in something and, and not to sort of give up when you fail. Just look at it as a learning curve. Just look at it as, as, as you know, something then you can say, well, I'm not going to do that again. I'll do it in a, in a different way. Um, I would say always be positive, be generous and be kind to yourself and be helpful to others because that always attracts those traits back to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I would also say follow a person that you admire, that you want to be like and and see what they do and see how they talk, um, where they network, um, you know, how did they get to this position that they're in and try and emulate what they do. If that if that is your um, goal, then I, that's another thing. Um, but just to make just to um, make sure that you realise that everybody's success is different. So what one person's meaning of success might not be the same as yours. Exactly. So you don't have to to pretend. Um, And also, if you know what what your success is going to feel like and look like and be like, then it's more tangible and Mm -hmm. achievable. Um, I would say... If, if you want to start up something that is, is you, um, is your brand, then try and be that go-to person um, and personality for that brand. You've got right. to you've build on the character, etc. I think um, that's I think that's really yeah. good. I mean, you've, what you've given there is a real good list of the type of stuff that you can be considered. And I think right there on the top of that list is don't panic for long it's perfectly natural to wonder what on earth am I going to do going forward take a breath and then there's often many options available yes um but you can't really think when you're panicked okay thank you so much for coming would you come back again absolutely yes yes I would love so absolutely um it's been a pleasure thank you you're welcome thank you Thank you once again for tuning into the Maverick Paradox podcast. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my conversation with Kay as much as I enjoyed having it. If you are pathologically curious and would love to find out more about the Maverick Paradox, then please subscribe to this podcast on one of the popular podcast platforms. Alternatively, you could explore our resources on Mavericks at maverickparadox.com. Or read the Maverick Paradox magazine. We publish frequently each week. If you subscribe, you will get our monthly newsletter. And let's not forget my book, The Maverick Paradox, The Secret Power Behind Successful Leaders. For those that love a good discussion, you could apply to join our exclusive Facebook group. And finally, if you would like to work with us or just interested in finding out more about the Maverick at work, check out our website, maverickparadox.co.uk